Hello, my name is Jarosław Kowalewski. I am Ruby on Rails developer in Visuality. And today I would like to talk about GraphQL in Ruby on Rails. I would like to introduce you into GraphQL basics and how actually you can include GraphQL into your Ruby on Rails application. But the first point is what GraphQL is, basically. So GraphQL is a query language for your API. Uh, the purpose is the same as with REST API, but it is achieved in slightly different way. It was developed internally by Facebook in 2012 and released uh, in 2015. Usually it is described as alternative for REST API, uh, what I mentioned before and GraphQL servers are available for every common language so probably it won't be an issue to introduce it into your application. But the thing is uh, what actually GraphQL is versus uh, REST API, what are the differences, what are pros and cons. Here is the comparison of those two technologies. So the first point is that GraphQL is provided via a specific tool, which is called GraphQL Server, and REST is architectural concept which can be achieved by many different ways and via different tools. In GraphQL we've got only one endpoint for serving requests and in REST we've got multiple endpoints and each of them serves separate requests. In GraphQL we can achieve to gather only specific data which we need and in REST we always receive data which is set default in the endpoint. GraphQL is strong typed schema so we've got types uh, like ints, strings and so on. Uh, REST is schemaless, we've got only JSON uh, API uh, which is defined by JSON standards. Uh, in GraphQL there is auto-generated schema via introspection system when in REST we have to uh, use the schema generators provided via external tools. In GraphQL we don't have to version the application, we just need to add new fields. And in REST obviously for each endpoint we have to version the application to be sure that every endpoint works for every version of application. Obviously GraphQL is not really a mature system and the REST is proven concept for many years. In GraphQL there might be an issue with uh, performance of big queries. When in REST uh, you can handle it via each endpoint so it's much easier to improve performance for specific endpoint. And in GraphQL it is really hard to cache without additional libraries when REST in is, easy, is easily cacheable. Here we can see that in GraphQL we've got one request and one endpoint which is just called GraphQL and it serves every function, function uh, in the application. Here where in REST we've got different requests for different endpoints which handles different functions. It is also important to mention that actually GraphQL and REST can work together in specific application. Uh, GraphQL can be even over the REST API. Uh, the example is when we've got, let's say files, database, one REST API and the second REST API. So we can gather all the data from those sources of data and process them to the client. How actually GraphQL works? So GraphQL provides two primitives the, the, and those primitives are defined by GraphQL uh, schema definition language. Those are types definitions and we've got operation types. So type definitions uh, are listed here and we've got objects 
those are let's say bread and butter of GraphQL so we can just define let's say user user would be an object and it's the most common uh, type that is used in uh, GraphQL usually uh, the object is uh, object represents the model in uh, Ruby on Rails we've got scalars uh, so those are string ints etc basic types enums are the types that are sets of discrete values and an enum field must return one of the possible values of the of the enum here are input objects so input objects are just complex inputs for graphql operator operations for example they can contain mutations or search fields or more complicated uh, objects there are uh, unions and the unions are hmm, those are let's say the union type is a set of object types and they can be gathered and they may appear in the same spot interfaces are lists of fields uh, which may be implemented by object types uh, list types are ordered lists containing items of other types and non-null values are yeah, we can just define the uh, type as a non-null so we just want to be sure that it will be never null basically so here are uh, three uh, basic operation types so here are queries they serve for requesting the data it's kind of uh, select uh, if you want to compare it into with uh, databases here we've got mutations uh, they serve for creation update and delete the data and we've got the subscription subscriptions are kind of types of notifications uh, so they are event-based it just works in the way that we can get for example notification when something was created deleted or something uh, similar graphql uh, is introduced into ruby and ruby on rails mm, with help of a gem called graphql ruby uh, its official site is graphqlruby.org and github repository is mosolgo graphql ruby um, there is also a premium version uh, which delivers some um, solutions for security for uh, more uh, more complex queries uh, so GraphQL Ruby generated provides to our application the setup of folder structure in app GraphQL. It adds basic schema, defi schema definition, it adds base type classes, uh, add query type definition, our road and controller for executing queries, so our endpoint basically. And it also provides GraphQL Rails, which is tool similar to Postman in REST APIs so it allows you to test your endpoints uh, without provided uh, client side. Mm, here we've got the basic folder structure so here are uh, types like enum, input object, interface etc uh, mutation, mutations, query, subscriptions, and here is the GraphQL schema. So schema looks like that. It inherits from GraphQL schema uh, uh, class, and here we've got defined mutations, defined query, and defined subscriptions. Uh, here we've got an example of our own type, uh, own type which is uh, link so link uh, is defined uh, by three fields it inherits from base object which is basically an object in graphql 
it cannot be null and here are defined the types so id string string and obviously the names of the fields so id url and description here we've got first query so this query serves for gathering all links from database so basically it is link all and here we've got uh, defined a query field that later on we can use in our application here we can see example usage of our all links query we use graphql tool to show the effect of uh, of this query so here we define all links with description id url so those uh, values you would like to receive uh, with in the answer of our request and here we can see that uh, there are all links uh, one by one with description here id and url so we got everything that uh, you, you wanted to achieve also we've got uh, defined uh, schema in GraphQL so as I mentioned it is defined by introspection system so we've got we go from schema to here to queries there is query all links and some other one here is the type which is returned uh, by uh, by all links method it is the list and it cannot be null it is known because of the exclamation mark and here is the link object described with description id url so those are the fields of the link uh, but the problem comes when let's say we want to define more queries so putting everything into just query type would cause a mess because we'll define all functions here put them here and it will shatter order of the application and make it makes it less readable so to prevent that what we should do is we should uh, create module uh, for queries and define base query class from which every of query will be inheriting so here we've got the base query class and uh, then we can define every query as separate class which inherits from base query and here uh, we can define the type or or any other attributes and here we define our uh, function for our request then we just need to include uh, the this query as query type uh, into our our class query types uh, here we've got a mutations as I mentioned before mutations serves for uh, modifying the database records or creating new R, uh, new ones or destroying old ones and we create it in similar way so define the module mutations and base mutations then we can create the example mutation so here we need the specific arguments to create uh, the link in this specific case and uh, we use resolve function to define the creation of the link here we've got the example methods and going further in GraphQL again we've got the story of available mutations and what actual mutations modify so here mutation uh, from create link creates new link and here mutation create link with description and url and in return we've got the id description and url so actually you can ask why uh, we cannot use create function in queries uh, like what would happen if we just call the create function in query uh, it seems that it would work in the same way how mutation works so the difference is that qu 
query might be called uh, concurrently so we can call a uh, couple of queries at the same time and the mutations are called always serially so the the reason is for example to not delete something before it was created and it is the main reason and main difference between mutations and query query might be called concurrently and mutations always are called serially subscriptions subscriptions as i mentioned are kind of notifications uh, here all uh, we define them in the same order how mutations and uh, queries so we've got the subscription module here we've got the specific example of, of subscription so this one is called new link and it will uh, return the description new link created which should be handled by uh, by the client and we put it into the subscription type so it uh, now it is available via introspection system and here uh, there is a way to call it uh, we call the after save function in class link which is a model class mm. so we call the function notifier subscriber of addition basically it works like when we create new link via mutation create link uh, after saving it into the database we can see that action cable uh, broadcasting uh, the event uh, so it can be handled by the client there are many tools uh, that we can provide uh, handling of subscriptions. Most common are Pusher, which is pretty popular for Android notifications and uh, iOS notifications. Here I use the Action Cable as it is default tool for Rails 5. So actually I think those are most important and most common basics of GraphQL and uh, I also presented uh, in basics how to introduce the GraphQL into your Ruby on Rails application. Obviously there is much more challenges like more complicated queries with multiple objects, complicated mutations, external APIs and so on, but as I mentioned this technology is still pretty young. It's four years so I think there is much to explore still. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching.